Hello and welcome to another episode of Open Studio. I'm your host, Martina Flora, and I'm not sure why, but I feel like singing every intro of this new season of the podcast. I've done it in the last episode and I'm doing it right now and I'm just letting it flow. And I go with the flow. So in the previous episode, I asked you to stop to celebrate a great accomplishment of yours, something that a few people realize and that you have realized, and that is huge. So you can catch up with that episode if you want, episode number 86. Today, I want to tell you the same thing. I want to tell you to stop again, but this time I want to tell you to stop practicing. Now, investing time in your skills is the right thing to do. From my perspective, if you're an artist, a lettering artist, an illustrator, investing time into honing your skills and getting better at what you do is a great investment, is really a great thing to do. Um, but if you never finish anything, how can you see real progress, right? And I feel that embedded in the word practice or practicing, it is the fact that you're just doing the thing and that you are not really finishing the thing or that's not really the goal. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to share with you as we go down this show, why I feel that finishing the thing is really important for you to get better at what you do and to propel you forward in your journey. And I'm also going to share with you a tool that I created that was motivated by the fact that I saw so many artists or so many, specifically so many lettering artists um, doing uh, that thing. They, they were ready to allocate some time to, um, to practice and get better, but they were hitting a wall because they were not really finishing anything that they were creating. And eventually they will lose motivation because they couldn't see any progress and they will leave or they will just quit all the thing altogether. And that's, I think that's the real, that's a real risk here or the real danger in a way here that if you don't see progress in the things that you're investing very precious time in, then the risk is that you will eventually quit the thing, right? Stop doing the thing uh, and think that you just don't have it or that you just can't do it or that, you know, it's not for you. So today I want to unpack this with you and share a couple of things that have worked for me and the the lettering artists and illustrators that I work with within my private community that has really allowed them to see progress in what they were doing. So, and as I, I'm going to share with you first, some of the things that I see artists doing often, and I want you to really listen to this part and think for yourself, is this me? Can I relate to this? And because realizing what you're doing is a very uh, important step to actually change it. And at the end of the, the episode, I'm going to share with you some very actionable steps or things that you can start implementing in your practice um, or in, your, in the time that you allocate to create work every day or every week uh, so that you can start seeing progress. So let's dive into it. Um, so what I see artists doing is that they allocate time to get better at what they do. And in that sense, artists are really prolific. I think that, you know, most of the people that I have worked with, they're, they're ready to invest their time because also they enjoy investing their time, right? They enjoy doing the thing. And this is why they are like, yeah, count me in. I'm going to invest some time every day to just get better at this thing that I love doing call that illustration, call that um, lettering, right? So, and what happens is that many, many of us, like that, what, that was my, my story as well. Many of us may not be working as commercial artists, right? So we, I, I used to have my day job at that time when I started doing lettering and many artists that come new into a, a craft, um, 
they have a day job. So they, they decide to allocate some time to practice after work. So they come from their day job um, and they, they sit down to work for one or two hours. And this is, this is what they commit to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to practice every day for two hours after work, right? Now, what happens normally is that, you know, first, it works on the first week. It works on the second week. On, a, on the third week, they, one day they need to stay longer at work because they need to finish a project. Um, another day they miss the bus or the subway and they just get home really late and it's just too late to get started and, uh, and to sit down to practice. Or one other day they are stuck in traffic and they come home and they're just too exhausted and tired and, and they just, you know, they just um, say, okay, let's make it a day and I will just practice tomorrow. And they, that day doesn't come, right? So at the end, they just you know, life keeps getting on the way and they end up neglecting that time that they allocated to practice, right? Another thing that I see artists doing is that they practice, right? And they never finish anything. So every single thing that they start in the time they allocate to create work is a draft or is a sketch. And it's not really a thing and it doesn't have any goal it's not made for anyone so at the end they are not motivated to actually finish the thing uh, because there there's no one there's virtually no one expecting them to finish that thing right so what happens is that everything they sit down to create ends up being a sketch or a draft and those sketches end up hidden somewhere in a drawer where all the sketches go to or in the trash bin, right? And what happens eventually is that they don't see their progress because everything is a work in progress. Everything is a sketch. Everything is a draft and nothing really gets finished and nothing really gets shared, right? And I bet that this happened to to many artists that are trying to uh, to get better at what they do. And it may happen to you as well, that because, because you don't finish anything or you don't finish the thing that you are creating, then you don't feel like sharing the thing because, you know, there's so much to do and it's, it's not finished and it doesn't look like you would like it to, to look. So you just don't share the thing so that that pushes you to stay in the shadows, right? It never, it never makes you or pushes you to go out there and show what you're capable of, right? So I hope I'm, I'm putting the message out there in terms of there's this cycle that I see so many artists um, going through, which is, you know, they allocate their time. They really want to get better at what they do. They enjoy doing the thing, but then since everything is a work in progress and they don't finish any of the projects, they lose that motivation that pushes them to continue doing the thing. So, you know, since life get, get, keeps getting on the way and they don't really see progress, they end up neglecting the time that they committed to, um, to invest in their skills and they quit the thing altogether, right? So, this is why I always insist in shifting the mindset from practicing to making. I always encourage artists or um, illustrators or lettering artists to really shift their mindset from practicing to making. Because this is also something, this mindset shift is some, also something that will take you from being an amateur to becoming a professional artist. Because professional artists actually are pushed to finish their 
pieces because they may they may need to meet a, a, a client deadline or they may need to deliver a project for a collaboration or a personal project that they want to put out there in their um, in the world or on their website right so this is something that is a definition of working as a professional artist which has to do with I need to deliver no matter whether I have a, rope, a, a, a creative block or if I have no time or if I'm coming late from, uh, from uh, I don't know, I got stuck in traffic and I'm coming late home, I need to finish the thing no matter what because someone is waiting for that thing to be finished, right? So I feel that making the mind shift from practicing to making even if you don't have that client assignment, if you don't have that deadline, uh, making that shift will just propel you forward towards that direction, right? From going to, from amateur to professional uh, artist, right? So why I think that making instead of practicing is so important for you and your skills? Because making create instances of comparisons and let me unpack this for you so when you finish something even if it's not perfect even if there's still things to get to improve um when you finish something you have that instance of comparison so i can look back at that lettering piece that i did today two years from now and i can see progress right i can see what are the things that I would do better? I can look at that lettering piece and compare it with a, a lettering piece that I did two months later and three months later and four months later and say, oh my God, I got better. You know, that one piece that I did three months ago uh, in comparison with this piece that I can create today, you know, I, I, my skills got really better, right? And and I think that these instances of comparison are really important in order to get an idea of the progress that you're doing and also to get that motivation to continue investing time into honing your skills. If you don't get that motivation, um, then, as I said before, you may, you may end up quitting the thing or thinking that you don't have the thing or that you don't have what's necessary to, to do the craft that you want to master, right? So the instances of comparisons of comparison are really important in order for you to see your progress. So making is also very important to avoid procrastination. Um, because if you, if you sit down to work and you say to yourself, well, I mean, I can finish this anytime, right? That means that you can you know, that you won't finish it, right? If you can finish this anytime, you know, at the end, the risk is that you will never finish the thing. And it happens to me when, whenever I have a professional assignment, it's like if someone tells me that I have a month to finish a project, I will probably just sleep on the thing until the, the deadline comes, right? Um, now, if I have just a few hours to finish the thing, then I would just get on to work and I would just try to work all the way through until I'm finished with that thing. So, you know, proposing yourself to, or starting a, a piece or a piece of work with the mindset of finishing the thing within a certain time frame, it also helps you avoid procrastination, helps you really use, make an efficient use of your time, that precious time that you allocated to get better at what you do. And the other thing is that making allows you to build a portfolio. And I think that's so important if you're trying to get better at what you do. And eventually you want, you would like to switch or to uh, make the pivot to really leave uh, from that and make a livelihood with your skills, then start building your portfolio now. I see so many lettering artists or illustrators thinking like, okay, what, when the time comes to launch my career as an artist, then I will build the portfolio. And it's like, start doing it right now. And 
eventually you can edit your portfolio and you can leave some of the first pieces that you feel are, you know, um, um, are not representative of your skills at that point in time. You can leave some of those out and you can edit, of course, but start building your portfolio now because it happens often that whenever I work with, um, and specifically when I work with uh, some of the members of my coaching program where I help lettering artists launch their, um, their creative business, is that many of them have left the portfolio building for later, right? They, they focus so much into um, honing their skills that they forget about the fact that eventually they want to launch their business in lettering, right? And, you know, when they decided to launch their business in lettering um, or illustration, they they feel overwhelmed with all the things that they need to do because it's not only about the business, but also about building that portfolio. And then it feels like too much. So if you haven't started building your portfolio, do it now. Use this this mindset of like switching from practicing to making to actually start finishing your pieces and building a portfolio and also like having your portfolio as a goal in your daily practice or your daily making is also something to look forward to. If you sit down to work with the idea that, hey, this piece that I'm creating right now is one piece that I'm going to put in my portfolio right? And this is something to look forward to. And probably it will push you to do your best, right? Now, I want you to imagine how your life, work, practice, or, uh, or making or creation would look like if you would switch your mindset from practicing to making, right? So that every day you sit down to work, you are instead of practicing and not finish anything, you will sit down to create and make and finish, right? Imagine if you could sit down to work and you could see real progress in your skills. Imagine if you would, you know, week after week, be able to see, hey, I'm getting better. Hey, look, I learned this. Hey, look, I can tackle this much better now. Hey, you know, that thing that I couldn't do last week, I can do it now. And I can see it because this lettering piece or this piece of illustration that I was doing, um, doesn't look anything like this new one that I just created, right? Imagine if you could see your progress so clearly in front of your eyes. Imagine if you would, if you will know what to do, and you wouldn't lose time figuring out what to draw every time. Imagine if that time that you have allocated every day to produce work would be really efficient. And instead of wasting the time into thinking, oh, what am I gonna, I'm, am I going to draw today or what am I going to do today? You will sit down to just do the work, right? Imagine if your results also will make you feel so good about yourself that you feel like sharing them everywhere, right? So imagine if every week that you sit down to work and create and make new pieces of work, you will feel proud of yourself and your progress so much so that you will be like, oh my God, I need to show the world what I'm creating now. I need to show the world how good I'm getting, right? Imagine if you will feel that confidence that is coming just from the fact that you're making progress. And also imagine if you could manage to put in certain amount of time consistently every week. And imagine how it would be if life wouldn't be getting on the way because I hear this all the time. Martina, you know, I signed up to do this with you, but life keeps getting on the way. And at the end of the day, I'm not doing the thing, right? Imagine if you could really accomplish those goals that you initially set, set up for yourself, right? So 
As we wrap up this episode, I want you to leave with a few hints that you could start implementing today so that instead of practicing, you can start making and seeing re real progress um, with your skills or in your skills. So number one, make it a priority. And this is something that it is really effective. It's a very simple thing, but it's a very effective thing to do when you want to accomplish something big, something that is important to you. And, and it's something that I use, I'm using, I'm, I'm applying myself in a project that I want to tackle this year, which is writing my new book. And I know that I speak a lot about this, but also it's a way for me to, to have more people keeping me accountable for that. So making it a priority. What I did is that I allocate one hour a day. So instead of allocating my writing time to after I finish my workday, I do it before. So I allocate the time to write before I get to do any work. I get to do any other thing during the day. So I put this as a priority, not only in my goal setting, but also literally in my day. So the one thing that I want to accomplish this year is the first thing that I do every day. And with this, I make sure that I don't neglect it. I don't neglect it because, I don't know, if I put it at the end of the day, I will come up, uh, I will end up saying, oh, I'm too tired to write. Or, uh, okay, I had to, you know, I was caught up in traffic and I couldn't get home on time. So now it's time to cook dinner for the kids and yeah, I cannot practice, right? So, um, and the fact that I put it, the first thing to do in the day um, gives me more chances of actually getting the thing done. So if you're trying to get better at what you do and you are allocating time already, instead of allocating the time to the last thing you do in the day, after you come from your day work or after you finish all your client projects, Put it first time, you know, put, put that thing first time in the day and you will see how that really changes, um, changes how, how often you do that thing, right? So number one, make this a priority, not only in your goal setting, but literally in your day, right? Put it first. The thing number two is that you need to know what you will be drawing or doing before you actually see to draw. So for this, you can come up with a side project. If you don't have a professional project to work on, um, come up with a side project, come up, come up with a series of parameters and limitations that, that saves the time for you uh, to figure out what you're gonna draw every day right? It could be anything. It could be a series of post postcards that you want to create for yourself. It could be a series of posters for a band. It could be anything, but have that pre-established before you sit down to draw so that when you sit down to draw, that's the only thing you need to do. You just need to follow the briefing and get down to work, right? Number three, you need to set up a deadline because the truth is that it will never be finished. You will always find something to improve. So what I always say is that you need to know when you're going to be done, even if it's not done, right? And you need to set up a deadline because it will help you use your time more efficiently. So whenever you sit down to draw, set yourself a deadline. You can set yourself a deadline closer or farther away. I will always recommend to set it, to set your deadline tight, right? So allocate two days, one week to finish that one piece that you're working on, right? And you will see how, how much that has an impact on what you get done in that week, right? And the step number four or the thing number four or the tip number four, which is really, really important is that you need to share the thing. 
which in a way is like publishing the thing, right? Even if it's not a professional project, I want you to publish the thing because the fact or knowing that you're going to share this with the world and other people will see it will put a certain level of pressure in that thing that you are creating, will put a healthy level of pressure and will very likely push you to give your best because other people will see it. It happens to me all the time whenever I'm recording a video. It's, it's different than when I'm, when I'm delivering a, a workshop live, right? So, um, so knowing that there's someone out there watching, that there's someone out there um, looking at what you're doing really puts a good level of pressure in what you're doing and will probably push you to, to give your best, right? Now, this is a system because I saw the, the impact that all of these strategies had on the, the students I work with within my community of future hand lettering masters. And, uh, and I see the results that they get by changing, by doing this shift between practicing and making. Um, this motivated me to create a tool, which is a free tool. If you're a lettering artist or you're interested in letters, and even if you're an illustrator or a designer, um, I invite you to look into this tool because I think it can give you an idea of how you can create, um, you can sh make that mind shift from practicing to making. The tool is called Lettering Maker, um, and you can find it on letteringmaker.com. It is essentially... What this is, it is essentially a brief generator and it has all of these things that I share with you uh, or some of the things that I just share with you. First, it gives you a couple of parameters to work with so that when you sit down to work, you don't have to think about anything, right? You don't have to really uh, spend any time into, into coming up with a project and thinking um you know, what is the color scheme or what, it, which audience am, am I trying to talk to? Or, um, you know, and a big part, for instance, for, for us, for lettering artists, a big part of, of our, or a big chunk of our time goes into thinking, which text can I draw, right? So this tool, letteringmaker.com, um, actually provides you with text so that you, you don't even have to think about the text you need to illustrate, right? And and the lettering maker also helps you set up a deadline so you find a calendar. Uh, it's a really fun thing because you get the briefing, you need to, to commit to a certain deadline and it also invites you to share the thing, to share what you created, right? Which is, uh, which is the finished piece. So if you're a lettering artist, go ahead, check it out. I know that a lot of uh, lettering artists out there are using this tool to um, to get better at what they do and to really sh make this mind shift from practicing to making. Uh, if you are an illustrator or a designer, I think this will give you an idea of what are you know what why this this uh, these tips that I gave you throughout this this podcast or this show will help you get better results and see real progress in your uh, in your practice or in your making, right? So I hope that this show has provided you with some interesting hints that you can start implementing today in your practice or in your making uh, so that you can start seeing real progress in what you're doing. Thank you so much for listening today. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead of you. Bye-bye. See you on the next episode of Open Studio. So this is it. I hope you loved this episode. You can find me, the host of the show, on social networks at Martina Flor on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. If you have a question or comments, go to martinaflor.com slash podcast, where you can see previous episodes, find show notes, and send voice memos with your comments and questions. You can also watch these episodes on YouTube. Just go to martinaflor.com slash YouTube to find them. You can, of course, listen to all our episodes on your favorite podcast platform. If you loved this episode, subscribe to this podcast. And if you leave us a review, it will help others find us. Thank you all for listening and see you in the next episode of Martina Flores Open Studio. Mm -hmm.
拜。